Hello everyone, welcome back. What another lovely, lovely, I love that song, AJ. Lovely intro. Thank you again. Uh, welcome, Mafians. Welcome, new listeners. I am your host, Two Clever Mafia, and you are once again listening to the Two Clever Mafia podcast. And we are, we got a hot one today, AJ. No, really a hot one. We're going to be going over all the meatless burgers that I've been eating and testing, and you've been eating and testing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we went out there, we, we found uh, the top uh, 10, actually, originally, that uh, we could get our hands on, especially. You'd be surprised a lot of this stuff is out of stock everywhere, but uh, we were able to get our hands on 10 of them. We narrowed them down to our top five, and we're going to give you our rank and review today. Yeah, I know. And I, it, me and AJ have, have probably had our fill of these meatless burgers, but uh, uh, my mafians out there, feel free to drop us a line if you've had them. What do you think of them? We got a lot of uh, uh, tweets. Is that what you call them, AJ? Tweets? I, I, I always get it confused. I'm getting old, you know, getting old. My mind isn't as sharp as a. It used to be a sharp as a tack. Now I don't know. Now I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I, if I keep the, uh, I got to get some, I don't know, what is good for the mind, uh, uh, ginkaloba? I don't, I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, so we've been eating a lot of, a lot of meatless burgers these days. And I don't know if you've had them, uh, mafians or not, but this is, um, yeah, yeah. The, the opinions definitely vary and it, it, it's in a, it, it, for some it's an acquired taste. They're not always vegan, though, and they're not always vegetarian. That's a huge, huge misconception for these burgers. Some of them are, and some of them really, really are good, and some of them uh, I, I could take or leave. But um, we, you know, it, it's basically, if, if you haven't had an experience with a meatless burger, if you've ever had a veggie burger, right, you know, it, it, it basically is a burger or a patty that doesn't contain any type of meat, Right. And these burgers may be made from ingredients like uh, like beans, uh, especially like soybeans and tofu, and then there's nuts and grains and seeds and uh, let's say fungi, you know, mushrooms and stuff. And uh, uh, also, uh, there's sometimes they they'll put things in there for a little extra protein boost. But they're you know they they go back quite a while, and they used to be you know veggie patties. If you think of that term, that's kind of where they but then the veggie patty never really tasted like meat. I mean, in, in a lot of cases, they didn't even try. It was just a plant-based uh, a burger that uh, people ate in a substitution of, of eating beef because they didn't want to eat beef or, or chicken or whatnot. But um, there's a company that went back to 2011 called Beyond Burgers. You may have heard of it. Basically, they started with this plant-based uh, meat substitute is how they, how they market it around to everyone. And... They, they, you know, they started with a good concept. They wanted to find, a, you know, they wanted to make a burger without meat. They wanted to be able to, be able to eat a burger without meat, but they didn't necessarily start out with the concept of making it healthy or a meat alternative. You know, they, they didn't really come up with that. You know, that wasn't their idea. It was just, how do, how do we, how do we not, um, you know, save the cows, I guess. How do we save the cows and then, and then not have, and, and be able to eat a hamburger. Now these, if you, you look at, at, at hamburgers in general, right, the fast food chains, all of them, you have uh, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, the, the, the Carl Juniors, the In-Out Burger on the, the West Coast. And um, the, I mean, there's, there's tons of them, but they, they, their meat is expensive. So if they can find a substitute um, to cook this stuff. Also, you got to remember, you, meat's got to be, uh, in some cases, it's got to be refrigerated properly. It's got to be treated properly. And recently, too, with, with what's going on, uh, some uh, fast food chains found a shortage of beef. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't, not necessarily was, was a shortage, but they couldn't get the, 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 the product transported to them. So it became a little bit of a hassle. So that might be kind of pushing this, this Beyond Burger um, craze a little bit stronger than it was initially, but it started back in 2011. And the real question a lot of people have in mind on their mind is, is, is it any good? And I got to tell you, I had a lot of them. I had probably too many different kinds, different variations. We're going to, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to my rankings and next, but wanted to kind of give you a good background here and, and, you know, and copying, um, 
the taste was what they were trying to do. You know, they were trying to make these, these, these uh, meatless burgers taste like meat. But in order to do that, um, it requires high amounts of saturated fat. And, and as we all know, um, you know, saturated fat is bad for both, you know, vegetarians and meat lovers. You know, you, you don't want to eat large amounts of saturated fat. It, it'll clog your, clog all your arteries, right, AJ? Yeah. Clog, clog your veins, the arteries. And, um, yeah, I know, I know mine are probably already ready to go, but there were pretty, pretty uh, jam packed freeway there in my, in my arteries anyway. Um, and then there were studies that showed that, um, that diets that provide more saturated fats could cause, you know, risks of heart disease and even premature death. And, you know, so are they healthy is the question. And they're probably not a whole lot healthier in some aspects than a regular hamburger. And the other problem you come across is with these meatless burgers is in, and this goes for a lot of things, uh, diet soda, for example, but you have to, you, they up the, the, the quantity of sodium in these. Yeah. Yeah. They, this, there's a lot more salt in it involved in, in to get that extra flavor. Cause you know, you know, you have a, you have, had food before, I'm sure that's bland, and a lot of it's bland because there's no salt. We're so used to salt, and especially these fast foods, and salt also acts as somewhat of a preservative to make this, especially some of the meats, last a little longer. But, you know, nowadays, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you could buy off the shelf different brands, and we're not, that's pretty much who we're going to go uh, get into because, uh, you know, there's Beyond Burgers, which we talked about, there's Impossible Burger. You've heard of, probably may have heard of them. Burger King has, you know, they came out with that burger. And uh, and that's probably, if, if you've tried one in a fast food restaurant as of right now, Burger King is probably your best bet if you tried it in Burger King. Have you tried one over there, AJ? No? No, I haven't. I've just tried the ones that we've tested that we're going to go over in the next segment. But um, uh, Mrs. Mafia did, did try one. And she said, you know, you, you really, it wasn't too bad. She said, you could, you couldn't really taste the difference. Now, granted, they serve it to you with all the lettuce, the, the mayonnaise, the, the onions and the tomato and, and, and you know, all the, the ketchup, all, all of the flavorings already on top of it, which let's be honest, is probably 80% of the taste of your burger. If you, if you're eating one, but if they're not healthier, I mean, like maybe they're better for the environment in the long run. Um, you know, cause there, there's definitely articles out there about how, how, uh, and you guys can look them up and girls can look them up, uh, the, the, um, about how cows, uh, as far as the environment and all of the, the, the toxic fumes they put up in the air and, and, uh, the carbon footprint that they leave behind, you know, I, I, I'm far from an environmentalist, but, uh, that it's easier. Um, and I, I guess you could feed, uh, more, more people at less of a cost in the end, because it's, you know, it's like I said before, it's mostly they're talking, putting uh, like beans and so, and tofus and, and soybeans and, you know, uh, all that stuff in there. So, uh, like the mushrooms, I, I think mushrooms give it a big taste, like I said earlier. So with, with all that, now I'm hearing McDonald's, right? My arch, uh, arch nemesis, I'm going to call them. Uh, the, uh, yeah, cause of the golden arches, but, uh, they, they're, uh, they're going to come out with a burger now that's supposedly going to be the, the meatless king, you know, they, they, they think they could beat everybody else. Well, McDonald's is, I mean, they have a footprint and they have all their stores, um, you know, so they definitely are going to have, uh, a leg up and, and maybe, um, uh, getting their burgers out there and getting people to taste them. But, uh, things come and go, you know, things come and go in the fast food industry. And if they can't make money on it, it'll disappear very quickly. And just, uh, when we purchased a lot of the things we're going to talk about in the next segment, we went out to different food stores. We had to try multiple places, uh, Walmart, Target, uh, the local food, uh, uh, uh shopping store, the grocery stores. And, uh, um, you know, and that, that's, so they're available. You can get these and make them yourself at home if you'd like. Um, if you didn't want to try the fast uh, food version of it. But uh, yeah, so 
you you'll be able to get them at McDonald's in like 2021. AJ sent me over a, a little uh, thing here, and uh, uh, they call it, you know the meatless battle burger or or the meatless burger battle is um, uh, the, the second chicken sandwich war. They're calling it because uh, if you if you haven't gone to a fast food place in a while, everybody it, it's a fight for those chicken sandwiches. They're trying to push a lot of people away from the burgers to the chicken sandwiches. Because they're cheaper. I mean, if you go to a food store, you know, you want to buy steak or beef. It's a lot more expensive than poultry a lot of times. And, um, you know, beans are very, generally very inexpensive. So we're going to, I'll be curious to see that because, you know, McDonald's is not known for their, their high quality food. Um, so I'd be very curious to see, and, and, you know, maybe we'll have a, a part two of this episode once they do come out next year to see how it tastes. Yeah. Would you try something like that, AJ? Yeah. What about ma- mafians out there? Anybody um, uh, listening to the stream online here that we're doing? Anybody uh, want, let's see. Um, so here's Jay Skaghetti from, uh, looks like San Jose, California said he would not try a McDonald's burger because he'd be he's afraid what's in the beef now. And he'd be even more afraid what would be in a meatless burger. Okay. Well that, that makes sense. I appreciate your comment there and uh, maybe we'll send you out a t shirt. Uh let's get another uh let's get another live comment here and uh here's Cheryl O. Oh, oh Oakland, California. Okay, we got another California listener. Hello, Cheryl. Uh, she'd be interested in trying the McDonald's, uh, McDon- the, the meatless burger. She said she's missed, um, she hasn't really gone to McDonald's since the McShaker salad was her favorite. And that, uh, the McShaker salad, that has to be some time ago. Wow. Well, thank you for that as well. We will be sending you out a, uh, uh, we'll send you out a nice new coffee mug. You can uh, maybe put a salad in it or something. I don't know. So, um, we're going to get right back. We're going to, we're going to come back with our five, our top five that we narrowed it down. And these are the, um, we're going to go over the basic stuff. We're going to, we're going to make it too boring. You know, we'll give you the basic, uh, nutrition ingredients, uh, kind of what our overview of the taste was and then how we rated them. So, uh, if you want to check them out and try them on your own, uh, you could venture out and, and, uh, and, and fry one up in your house. They, they cook very fairly quickly though, too, as well. Uh, the ones we've experienced, we'll get into that, but they, you know, you, you, you flip them on each side. It's like, uh, it was eight minutes aside. We were, we had them all, all going in the, uh, in the studio kitchen here and cooking them all up, but, uh, they're pretty quick. They're pretty quick. And they, you know, some look like real hamburgers. Other ones, uh, you know, I, I look like almost an English muffin that was cut in half. So, but, uh, we'll go, we'll get into all that. Check us out over at twocleavermafia.com. Uh, join us, uh, have the conversations with us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. Send us your pictures of your veggie burgers if you want. Tag the uh, hashtag Too Clever Mafia. Uh, and if we ask anything, that's for you to please like and subscribe on whatever podcast service you're listening to us. Uh, helps us out tremendously, and we really do appreciate it. It helps us continue to bring great content your way and do tests like this that uh, quite honestly was pretty expensive getting all these burgers cooked up and uh, uh, searching around for days trying to find them all so uh, check us out Uh, we're going to take a short break and uh, don't go anywhere we've got a big uh, big taste test cook off coming up next Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you again, AJ, for another lovely intro. So we are going to get right into this because it's making me hungry, AJ. I'm kind of, you know, I didn't have lunch today, um, in part because we ate so many of these hamburgers two days ago, uh, or they're not even hamburgers, right? They're meatless burgers or veggie patties or possible beyond, uh, light year burger. I don't know what you want to call it, but, uh, yeah, so... We, we rated, we, we, we originally picked up 10, okay? And we, we kind of figured, how are we going to do this and keep it under like a 12-hour show? So we really want to do that. So we picked up 
we, we went around, we scoured around the local stores. We went to Walmart, Target, all the grocery stores, Whole Foods. Uh, what was the other one? There was another big Wegmans, big, big, big ones we went to. And we, we got all of the, the, the meatless veggie burgers that we can find. We, and then we brought them all back here. I think we ended up having finding 12, 12 different guys. We cooked them all up. And in, in, we, we tested the burgers by themselves because you, you, we, we talked about this earlier. You go to like Burger King or someplace like that. They got all kinds of uh, uh, junk on there. You got your mayo and your tomato and your lettuce. They can pretty much make anything taste good, right? So we wanted to taste these uh, au naturel. So we set them all up. We threw them all on there. We cooked them per the recommendations on the boxes. And, and, and then we tasted them. We each took a little quarter out of each one and a bite and, and then cleansed our palate, so to speak, and then with a glass of water. And then we went on to the next one and the next one and the next one, and we did it until we had no food left. Um, and we eliminated five. Actually, we eliminated seven, but we, we, we have a top five. So, And we have a number one. We have a clear-cut number one. And how we graded them is, we, first we looked at nutrition. We looked at how, you know, if the, if it's twice as bad for you than a hamburger and the salt or the fat or anything, um, you know, it, it, if it overwhelmed all of everything else in the burger, all the, any healthy aspects, let's say fiber or any, or anything like that, we, we kind of toss some of those out. And be, besides the, the beans and the veggies Many patty, patties contained um, different, unpronounceable ingredients that I hate to tell you, but they're not found in Mrs. Mafia's garden. You know, they're, they're, there's nothing. I, I, they're, they're, it's it's chemicals, folks. I mean, they do chemicals, and um, so when you do try this, make sure that the burger is the chemicals in there aren't harmful to you. To maybe if you're on a, some sort of medication or something, but you definitely have to look at them because there's a lot of chemicals in there and a lot of salt, and ev almost everyone had different ingredients, which was, was interesting. There was very little, some consistencies, but for the most part, they were different. And then we kind of rated the, the, how they, they looked. I mean, did they look like a hamburger? And did they feel, uh, you know, were they mushy or, 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 or not? I mean, did it feel like a hamburger? Would you crumble apart like a normal hamburger would? Um, you know, and how did it hold up to the heat when we grilled them? That was another whole, whole process that we took. We, we put a lot of work into this folks. We put a lot of work into this and, um, and then obviously the taste, did we like it at the end? Uh, you know, what was, when we bit into this, the veggie burgers, did, it, did it taste like what we wanted it to taste like what we thought, what we, you know, based on looks and appearance, well, did, did it really taste like what we thought it was going to taste like? And, um, were they seasons good enough? Uh, did the veggies caramelize when you cooked them good enough? Uh, and you know, it wasn't overly flavored and all that stuff. So we're going to get right in here. Do we, can we get a little drum roll here? Thank you, AJ. So it's going to be Dr. Prager's all American veggie burger. I don't know if he's a real doctor, but, uh, it's gluten free, soy free, 25 grams of protein. Uh, you had 290 calories and the ingredients were mostly, uh, for the protein, you had your black beans, your carrots, your sweet potatoes. It had uh, butternut squash, uh, roasted garlic, onion powder, and sea salt for the most part as the ingredients. And it appeared like a burger. I got to say, it was pretty dense. The texture, it filled up, uh, it, it filled us up, you know, as we, as we ate more of it. Cause some of these, we, after we did the testing, we, 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 we kind of finished some of the ones we liked off. And this was one I went back to and it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was, um, not my top pick out of the group wasn't as flavorful, but like I said, if you're putting all your toppings on, your salt, your pepper, your uh, uh, tomato, onion, lettuce, all of that stuff, it, it kind of will add to it. And it kind of tasted, it had a little bit of a, a, a mashed potato taste without the butter. A little grainier though. Not, I wouldn't say they were, you know, grandmom's mashed potatoes. It was, it was really like more of an instant kind of flavor, but uh, without the butter, without the butter. So that, that's the easiest way I can explain it. And it wasn't, as far as health factors, there was some fiber in it, so it did offset some of the carbs, so it's not horrible for you. So 
We're going to go to number four on the list, and uh, we don't need a drum roll, but we're going to go to number four of our top five, was the Impossible Foods Impossible Burger. And this one, this one had a red texture in the middle. It was only 220 calories. The the the, the base of this burger, it's made with a wheat protein and a coconut, I'm sorry, coconut oil and potato protein as well as ham. And with lens, the burger, it's kind of meaty taste aroma with that. So that's uh, pretty interesting. And it, it definitely had the look of meat. And it, it it looked like, um, it, it, almost like a, a if you had a, a pulled pork sandwich, it, it looked like that. So biting into it, you know, you revealed an, an unexpected kind of mushy mouthfeel, which somewhat resembled ground beef, but just not, not really close, but not, no, no cigar, as they say. And if you've ever had, um, have you ever had a jackfruit, AJ, a jackfruit? No, no, you haven't. Okay. Well, well. If you ha- if you taste this this burger, uh, it it kind of tastes like a very fibrous fruit, almost. But that without the fruity flavor, I didn't really have that sweetness. Um, well, you know, we we grilled these up nicely, so the outer part of the burger it, it tasted like real meat, but the the inside um, it didn't deliver that meaty flavor that you'd expect from from a real burger. So, you know, given the Impossible Burger is. Um, really working hard to, to make that meat seem like real meat. Uh, and we were expecting to be fooled really by the, the kind of the architecture of the burger, but not quite. We, we, we missed the mark. We feel a little bit and the burger was, uh, was tasty. And another one I went back to, uh, and it was more flavorful than, than the previous burger we tested, but, uh, it, it, it wasn't our number one. It wasn't our number one. And then the number three on the list it was Hillary Azuki's Bean Burger. Now, these burgers, these are the ones that looked, when I first saw them, I thought they were frozen English muffins. They looked like a grainy for frozen English muffins. And before, you know, once you pick them up, you realize that wasn't the case. But these only had 180 calories. So they, they, the calorie-wise, they definitely got a little bit better for you. And, and the ingredients in, in these were mostly a uh, whole grain millet and the Azuki beans, which were, you know, whole grain quinoa, as well as organic coconut oil again, and onions and, and sweet potatoes. They seem to go with the sweet potatoes to kind of get it that uh, red tint to the to the burger. Although this one really didn't even pretend to be a burger, I don't think. Um, it was great that you could see the the you know the p- different pieces of of the vegetables inside the burger. Uh, you could see the quinoa and the cubed sweet potatoes. Again, not trying to pretend to be a burger uh, or you know camouflage or. or be a chameleon burger, I guess, but the burger was overpowering uh, with a peppery scent, and it was it, zingy is the word, and just as expected, I, I as I expected, uh, AJ and I both felt this this burger had a little bit of a kick because there was chili and cumin and, and lime and a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there, and even though uh, it offered, it, it was marketed kind of as a bean burger to us is why we bought it. The patty had more of a texture of the quinoa and the millet flavor going for it. So aside from, you know, a very English muffiny look to it uh, and a lot of salt, there was an overwhelming amount of salt. We, we you know, we like this one a lot um, because the main ingredient of the burger was quinoa, you know, so uh, it's something we know. And there was some protein and some other things in there. And I guess uh, there might've been a dollop of, 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 of like cottage cheese uh, on top of it would be, would be a good idea. Kind of give you a little bit, a uh, little extra protein uh, punch to it. If you, if you really wanted to, uh, AJ threw some on there and it wasn't too bad. So we, we kind of tasted a couple of things out, but as it was, that was our number three. And then number two, this, um, this was one that was interesting because we bought, uh, I personally bought, purchased this one because on the box, it had a big thing that said low sodium. And we knew we were going to be up against the sodium uh, verdict. Plus, the picture looked really nice. I think it had a piece of avocado, and the burger looked like a burger. But it was the uh, uh, Amy's Light in Sodium California Veggie Burger, right? So we'll try it. 110 calories, the lowest so far in the bunch. We keep going down. And the ingredients were, were fairly simple. It had uh, organic ingredients like mushrooms, onions, uh, celery, carrot, oats, walnuts, things like that. And no, nothing out of the ordinary on this one. And... 
the, the burger patty itself was was fairly small, and uh, it, it smelled like a like truffle fries, and that that could be because of the the mushrooms in there. And the first impressions was it was uh, you, you could tell the first ingredient was mushrooms. You know, the book the burger was 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 um, the the crunchy walnuts kind of dominated the burger's texture. You know, I, I think a little bit, and if if you ever um, had a crazy a craving. Uh, you know, for uh, like a mushroom risotto or something like that. Uh, you know, you could save the calories by having something like this instead. Uh, you know, the patty the patty had a lot of um, a lot of garlic, big big hint of garlic. You know, uh, you could definitely uh, uh, get those garlic hints, but the uh, it was what you expected from the ingredients in the actual burger, right? And taste wise, I mean, the patty the patty deserve top marks because it was not overly salted, which is one of the reasons why we purchased it. And they, it, it had a, a hard to explain, not like a celery crunch, but it had a, a, a decent crunch when you, when you, when you, when you bit into it and th- that the mushroom flavor, uh, I think would pair nice, especially if you put some cheese or something on top of it, it would go pretty well if you like mushrooms. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it was probably one of the more healthier ones that we had, uh, calorie wise. So number one, you want to do a drum roll for this one, AJ? Let's get another drum roll in here. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. So number one out of all the ones we tested was the Beyond Meat and the Beyond Meat Burger, which was a plant-based burger patty. This we found in the local grocery store, kind of pricey, I might add, but each patty was only 290 calories. So at 290 calories, you can almost double the last one we had. But and the the, the burger uh, was it, based on the packaging. It was all about the non-GMO ingredients and um, again, pea protein, canola oil, and coconut oil. But the it, you know in the packaging, it looked like you were buying a pound of, of ground beef. I mean, that's what it looked like. And it, you know, we found it in the meat section. We found it right next to. Um, the, the 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 they have like a cold case with all the different uh, ground beef and whatnot and it was like right over next to it and uh easy enough to find when i was when i was looking around and you know when you flip it over it, you revealed kind of a uh a weird looking pink like a fleshy patty that was uh you know it needed a direct flame it almost looked like we needed to get that puppy onto a grill you know Right, AJ. Yeah, we we th- we, th- we thought we accidentally bought chopped meat at this time, but it looked weird. It was like a uh, like almost like a pink slime from the beef days. Um, although it wasn't oozing really blood, it, it was it actually oozing what they call beet juice. So um, we we cooked it kind of to well done and texture wise, you wouldn't be able to tell it apart from ground beef. It was it was the most uh, texture wise, the most closest we've had to a ground beef patty. Amazing. It was amazing. And after we, we cooked it on the broiling, uh, the broiler for about uh, eight minutes on each side, that was the directions that came with it. And the patty came out slightly charred, tasted, uh, you know, it tasted strikingly like meat, like, like a wood, a hamburger on the grill. And, you know, we thought it would taste more, um, I guess we thought it would taste more like a burger made with the blend of like kind of ground chicken and ground beef like if you mix something together you know but it it was very there was a a hint of beef flavor i guess you could say without the beef so that was pretty uh pretty fun and that's why that kind of won our top score and you definitely uh, if you haven't tried one you know the beyond burger is beyond juicy we by the way this isn't a sponsored way in a product in any way but it, it was definitely juicy if you like a juicy hamburger, some of us don't, but if you like a juicy hamburger and that meaty taste and, and you know, oh, it's almost an exact replica of a, of a poultry patty. If you've had a chicken patty, uh, it, it, you know, except it looked like and kind of bled like beef burger would, um, you, you, you might enjoy this. It's also packed in, uh, it, it, you, you, it's packed in iron. There's a lot of iron in the recipe which uh, is is good for some of us and overall it was about 80 percent leaner than a beef burger so it was healthier too than a beef burger uh the 
you know, I don't know if I would serve it up in a barbecue. I don't know if guests would be tricked or not. They would know it's something different, but, um, on a, again, on a bun with the proper, uh, accessories and condiments, I think it would definitely, um, surprise some. He may even fool some. So we are going to get, uh, take a short break. I'm getting very hungry now. And we're going to be right back with our final words on this whole meatless burger phenomenon. And uh, if you have any different picks, anything that we missed, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we can maybe do a part two of this if there's enough of them to try. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe, the, like I said, the McDonald's burger will come out. Maybe we'll do a part two and feature the McDonald's uh, meatless burger and See how it stacks up against the the Beyond Burger that we seem to have enjoyed here at the show. So we're going to take a short break. We will be right back after this. Welcome, welcome back, Mafians. Thank you again, AJ, for another wonderful intro. And we are here to wrap up today's show. I am your host, too clever mafia and you're listening to the too clever mafia and this is going to be my final words segment on the meatless burgers and some of you folks out there i understand vegetarians vegan um or just carnivores and they love anything meat but uh i you know the the winner in my book the beyond burger that we we tried I, I could see myself eating that from time to time as as just an additional meal. You know, as far as a replacement for meat and hamburgers and all of that stuff, I'm I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not a vegan. Not yet, anyway. And, uh, yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Mafia would probably like me to be. But, uh, in, yeah, I, I understand. And AJ is also kind of half and half and cuts out meat when he can. But... Uh, I think I'm going to stick to the good old fashioned hamburgers. You know, maybe I'll get a leaner, leaner chopped meat or a leaner beef, but uh, they, they haven't, they will though. I feel like with the ones we've tested, the, the, the quite a few different brands we tested, they're getting there, especially, I mean, from some of the brands we looked at too were older or they weren't really trying to be imitation beef or meatless patties. They were just veggie patties. They were, or bean patties as you will. And, you know, they were, they were good in their own right for what they were. And the Beyond Burger, uh, you know, basically was a, uh, a meat colored, uh, beet juice bleeding chicken sandwich. So, uh, in, in, in a lot of ways and they're getting there, the, the texture is there now if they can just nail down the flavor and also keep natural ingredients, um, you know, cause I, you remember back, I, I, you probably don't know. They, they, occasionally they come out with things time to time that just throw your mind into a tizzy and your taste buds crazy because they, they came out with a, a, a ketchup, a, a, a tomato, a, a tomato ketchup, but it was green. And then they had a purple version. And even though it tasted the same, if you close your eyes, but you're looking at it, you're like, I, I just can't eat purple ketchup. You know, it, it, it's that connection between your brain and your mouth. And it's just like, you expect it to be something. It's like well, years and years ago, they had, um, well, I know it shouldn't be that long. They had uh, Pepsi. They might even come back. Crystal Pepsi, I think it was. And it was a clear soda. And you just, you were like, you know, it, 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 it tastes like Pepsi, but it's, it, it's one of those, it, it just doesn't look like it. You know, and it was just weird. It was strange. And you, you know, like, ah, I'll just stick with the regular stuff. And I think that's what's happening here. And eventually it will, uh, get to a point where these, these, these meatless burgers are just going to be the, the norm, especially if we're talking about McDonald's ended up having to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking, you know, I wouldn't mind trying that after trying all of these that I've gone through. Um, and I haven't tried the Burger King one yet, maybe, but after this little test drive, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll swing over there through the drive through with the grandkids or Mrs. Mafia might want to split one with me if they still even have it over there. But the, um, it, 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 it's definitely something on my radar now. 
I got to say. And, and the calories going through the different uh, ingredients in these, JJ, and I'm sure you, you felt the same way. The, the calories counts were so much lower than what you would have expected. Um, you know, some of them were, were less than 200 calories and, and that that's good from a health aspect. And for somebody like me that has to kind of watch what I'm eating, uh, maybe that is a good substitution, but, uh, I've been staying out of the fast food drive through recently. And I think this, I, I, I've eaten so many of these impossible burgers. I, I, I think I've gotten my veggie intake for, uh, for a long time. I got to catch up and have some steak or something tonight. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hope you enjoyed our little, a little show today and in, in our little comparison and look, drop us a line, uh, over on any of the social medias. Let us know if, if there's one that we missed maybe, or one that you might want us to try that's better. We will go out and give it a shot and maybe add it to our part two of an episode. If we get enough requests and, uh, anywhere on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, it's, we're at Two Clever Mafia, T O O Clever Mafia. If you'd like to support our channel, definitely head over to uh, check the link out in the description below. But uh, you can head over to Anchor and our support page, and uh, you can make donations. We we've gotten quite a few of late, and we do appreciate everyone. And uh, we do send out uh, personal thank yous and and gifts as well. So uh, we, but either way, we love what we do, and we do it for. The listeners, um, AJ does it for a paycheck. Uh, I, I do it to, to bring the power of knowledge to everyone out there. And I hope you're learning a thing or two, or we're helping you in some way and continue to listen, like, and subscribe us to on, on any podcast, wherever you're listening to us. That's the main thing we like you to do when you, you hang up this, this call or you, 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 you press the stop button, just like, and subscribe on any, whatever, whatever services you're listening to us on. And we really do appreciate it. And if you'd like some more info, Feel free to head over to our website, twoclevermafia.com. And uh, I think we're going to wrap this one up, kind of wrap up all of our uh, our cooking utensils here and our our, our grill, our, our indoor grill that we have. And uh, we're going to get uh, get cracking on next week's episode. Uh, and uh, anything else you'd like to say today, AJ? <laughs> no? Okay. I didn't think so. All right, everyone. Uh, I am your host, Two Clever Mafia. This is the Two Clever Mafia podcast, and that is all I have to say about that. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>